In the second part, our learning objectives are going to be using equations, explain why rain is naturally acidic, and also explain the formation of acid rain. The first objective relates directly to this science understanding about carbon dioxide and its ability to naturally dissolve in rainwater. Rain is naturally acidic due to the presence of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a non-metal oxide. Non-metal oxides are acidic oxides. Acidic oxides react with water to produce an oxy acid. So carbon dioxide reacts with water, produces carbonic acid as its oxy acid. This reaction is what then results in rain naturally having a pH between 5.6 to 7. And that occurs because carbonic acid can then ionize and it can produce hydrogen ions. But keep in mind that this reaction does not readily occur. Carbonic acid is classified as a rather weak acid. If we have a look at the equation, H2CO3 can react with water, it can donate its proton to form HCO3- or hydrogen carbonate ions plus hydronium ions. I've used a double arrow here to indicate that it is a partial reaction so it doesn't go to completion. And the same case for the second stage of ionization. So hydrogen carbonate ions can also donate protons to water and then eventually form carbonate ions and more hydronium ions. So this overall happens to quite a low degree, resulting in a solution that is not too acidic. Our second science understanding now deals with looking at acid rain. In particular, we'll look at this first part here. Oxides of sulfur and nitrogen in the atmosphere can produce rain with a pH below 5.6. And I'll be going through writing equations for the reactions of oxides of sulfur and nitrogen with water that then contribute to acid rain. The second point is something that we will be getting you to consider as an investigation. So looking at different activities that can cause it and strategies used to prevent this from happening. If acidic rain has a pH between 5.6 to 7, then anything less than that 5.6 we can classify as acid rain. It's important for you to note that, that number because it's the SACE's definition of what acid rain is. As said before, oxides of sulfur and nitrogen have the ability to form acid rain. And as I've mentioned before, non-metal oxides are acidic oxides. We saw that with carbon dioxide forming carbonic acid, sulfur dioxide could also react with water and produce sulfurous acid being an oxy acid. How does sulfur actually contribute to acid rain? Fossil fuels contain trace amounts of sulfur impurities. And during the combustion of fossil fuels like uh, petrol, sulfur can combine with oxygen and form sulfur dioxide, our non-metal or acidic oxide. So S plus O2 produces SO2. Sulfur dioxide can also form from the roasting of metallic ores. So these processes are often used in order to extract metals from their ores. And this reaction shows you the roasting of zinc sulfide um, in oxygen to produce zinc oxide but also sulfur dioxide gas. Some of the sulfur dioxide gas can react with atmospheric water and produce sulfurous acid, which is considered a weak acid. While some of the sulfur dioxide reacts with water at this stage, some of it can further react with oxygen and it can form sulfur trioxide, which is SO3 here. This sulfur trioxide can then react with the atmospheric water and produce sulfuric acid, which is classified as a contributor to acid rain. So SO3 reacting with water to produce H2SO4. Now looking at oxides of nitrogen, in various high temperature environments, nitrogen can react with oxygen and form nitric oxide. That's given by this equation here. What types of high temperature environments are we talking about? They can be natural phenomenons like lightning strikes and bushfires, uh, or they could be more artificial or man-induced processes such as the internal combustion engines in motor vehicles, uh, you're looking at jet engines as well, and also industrial furnaces. The thing that they have in common is that they have high temperature environments and this is potentially enough to break strong triple bond in nitrogen, allow it to react with oxygen and form nitric oxide. 
Nitric oxide can then further react with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide, given by this equation. Nitrogen dioxide can then react with atmospheric water. It actually produces two different types of acids, so nitric acid and nitrous acid. Nitric acid is our strong acid. Nitrous acid is our weak acid. So we say that nitric acid is a contributor to acid rain. So finally, based on these two equations here, sulfuric and nitric acid being strong acids are readily ionized and therefore contribute to acid rain given by these equations. And we've shown this with a single arrow to indicate that this reaction essentially goes to completion. This diagram just summarizes some of those processes. So we could think of natural processes, but in this case, we've got some more anthropogenic or man-induced uh, causes, so motor vehicles, industrial processes that can contribute to sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide formation, so that can include nitric and nitrogen dioxide. These in the atmosphere can then react with water and produce our nitric acid and our sulfuric acid, and then this essentially precipitates as rain, and specifically we call it acid rain. That concludes 5.3 on the pH scale. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.